dinner done. Oh. <laughs> hey everybody! Hi, Happy Monday! We hope you guys had a really blessed Easter weekend and that you are ready for another awesome week. Today's a little bit of a sad day for us. It was actually supposed to be the first day of our spring break camp program and we had got some like awesome plans done and it was just gonna be really great. And obviously with everything happening, that isn't happening right now. But it's okay, because we're gonna be with you guys virtually today and do some awesome activities. So let's just go right into it. Today's scripture comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Uh, we thought we'd start this week with this verse from First Peter because it's kind of bringing together everything that's just been happening this weekend uh, and the week before and, and mostly all of our time of Lent. I feel like we say this every day, but it really can't be said enough that it's true. Jesus died for us so that we can have a relationship with God. It's the final covenant. There's no need for other sacrifices. The one true sacrifice has, has happened. I also really like the imagery here of the righteous for the unrighteous, right? I'm sure we can probably work out, right, that, that Jesus was the righteous one and were the unrighteous ones, that, but it's us that are going to reap the benefit, the rewards of, of his sacrifice. And it's for the reason to bring us closer to God. I also appreciate just how simple this verse is. There's no big fancy words. There's no other thing happening here. It's just plain fact and it's laying it all out for us. Christ died for us. In the context of the chapter, this verse right here is basically saying you're not alone in your suffering. Earlier in the chapter, Peter was saying how we treat one another and how we should treat people who aren't even good to us. And then he goes on to explain that Jesus did that, that Jesus died for us. Jesus was persecuted by those that he loved, but he still decided to save them all. So right now, you might feel a little isolated in your suffering. You might be going through something and you feel like you don't have someone to talk to about it, but it's important to know that you're not alone in your suffering. Jesus is with you through it. He has carried your burdens before. He continues to carry them and you're not alone. For today's fun slot, we are gonna paint some eggs since it's Easter weekend. Right. No idea what to do. <laughs> we don't wanna waste our eggs. We're gonna do something when you blow the egg out of its shell and we're gonna put it in these bowls so we can make some breakfast things. Yes. If you don't care about wasting your eggs, you just boil them. You need something small to poke it with. What's this called? Paperclip. I have a paperclip. And you need something bigger to poke it with. You have these sticks. You also need tape. You're gonna tape each side so that when you poke it, it doesn't crack it. So now we're gonna tape both ends. Yeah, I have like zero concept of what I'm doing. Does an egg have an end? And then you poke it. With what? So one side you poke with the smaller poker. Oh, I'm so nervous that I'm gonna break it. And then I'm gonna poke it with the big one. And take the tape off. Which end? Both. The egg won't just fall out, will it? Of what? The egg. Out of the hole? Yeah. No, you have to blow it out. That's why you have two holes. You blow it out of the small hole so it comes out of the big hole. Get it all out? Yeah. It won't blow. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, you are full of hot air. You can do this. Let me see your Is other it? hole. Yeah, why can't you do this? I don't know. Done. It looks gross coming out. Told you, I am the arts and crafts professional here. We actually blew four eggs, two and two. We saved Kate the embarrassment and did it off camera. I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> now we come to dyeing our eggs. You're gonna need vinegar, hot water, a vessel to place it in, dye. First thing you do is you need a cup of hot water per vessel. And you need like eight drops of food coloring. So Danny, if you want to put eight drops into the ones that have hot water. I'm good at this part. No, no, you always put too much. You need a quarter cup of vinegar. Oh, I've got nine, do you think it's gonna matter? No, it's okay. An extra one fellow. That one also got nine, an extra one fellow. So now we dye our eggs. Just drop them in. I think so. Feel like it's dyed enough, just take it out. Our eggs are dry and we're ready to paint. I'm using the Caribbean. Oh, you used my paintbrush set. I want to change my mind. It's okay. <gasps> All right, we're gonna go to this one instead. 
Yours reminds me of Charlie Brown. Looks like a small child painted it and misjudged how, uh, how it was gonna look. What color is that? Chalk? No, they're all chalk paint. Oh. It's celery. Wait, who buys celery as a color? Me. It does look like rotten celery. Rotted? Mine are done. Oh. <laughs> no, that's what I wanted to happen. Well, B.I.B. when they're dry. Our eggs are done and they're beautiful. I think they've turned out really well. You guys should see them. All right, so those are our eggs. They came out really well. Um, I made a little dinosaur egg and then some like cracked chick egg. I made some Easter themed ones. One says risen and one has crosses on it. You guys should make your own painted eggs and send us a picture so we can see what it looks like. Here's a comment we got. Cool. That's everything for today. So we will see everybody tomorrow. Bye. Bye.